between Christine Marcy and Michelle Obama. I want to go back to the period when the Clintons, or just immediately afterwards, uh, that's 1993, where the Clintons had set up a dirty blood trading uh, arm in the Arkansas prison system. And apparently the prisoners were being offered $5 a pint for uh, the blood, and that was in many cases contaminated with all kinds of uh, viruses and bacteria and infections. And then it would be shipped up probably using Christine Mars's uh, Justice Prisoner and Alien Transportation System, which would be intercepted by the normal uh, customs border people. And so the supplies would be taken to Montreal, I think it was, where a company called Connaught Systems would process the blood into plasma before exporting it off to Africa. And uh, people should understand that these uh, are Fabians. Uh, you know, they're looking at a formula which is basically government by an elite, centralized credit, and depopulation. And, of course, these characters that swan off to Georgetown University and various other universities, they do have an immensely elevated opinion of their own intellectual capability. Uh, my sense is they've actually clipped into a scam which is decades, if not centuries old, and so they can bubble all the way to the surface but uh, or to the top, but ultimately the best they can field at, at any occasion is a B team. And what we're looking at now with Christine Marcy and Miriam Clegg and uh, Obama's wife, uh, we are looking at a B team or maybe even a C team. But back to this blood. So Christine Marcy is operating the United States Justice Prisoner and Alien Transportation System. And she launches it in 1995. It would appear to have be carrying passengers, prisoners and aliens who are given a manufactured set of papers or an electronic cards, or maybe even they have a subcutaneous uh, chip put under their skin so they can be tracked through the system, and they can cross borders with impunity. Now, just to remind folks about the Section 1958 of the United States Criminal Code, murder for hire, anyone who uses or travels or induces the victim to use or travel in interstate or foreign commerce for the purposes of murder for hire, where death results faces an automatic uh, death penalty or life imprisonment. So this legislation was in... Is, are you backfield? Yes, I am, and guess what? What? I think that's the first time ever uh, something really interesting, and I, I did pick up that you were talking about A-team, B-team, and C-team. I think, right. I, um, in fact, I'll ask you at the end of this, brief response, I'll ask you what the last words out of my mouth were before my laptop was taken down, which I'm recovering. I'm talking to you on my home phone, and I've shut down my laptop, and I'm bringing it back, but if there's any people that think they're going to stop the message from getting out, I've got some really bad news for you, weasels. The message is all over Able Danger website. It's backed up on computers around the world. Uh, we have lots of people that are archivists. Um, you're not going to stop the truth, and this freight train's heading down the tracks, and the tracks are oiled. Uh, so standing on the brakes is going to do nothing, and interrupting my computer is going to do nothing. And I'll give you a challenge, whoever you weasels are. I will be driving or flying from Plum City, Texas, uh, Plum City, Wisconsin, excuse me, to some different towns in Texas over Memorial Day weekend. And the nature of my trip is either to make a speech uh, declaring victory and the victory I will be declaring is the um, the obstruction of some plans to take down as many as three buildings in Chicago on May 20th and May 21st, those buildings being the John Hancock Center called Big John, the Sears Tower called the Willis Tower, and whatever sniveling weasel office is at one Dearborn in Chicago. David, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Phil. So... Let's uh, just go back to this tainted blood, because the tainted blood trade that was developed by the Clintons in the Arkansas prison system is uh, the, the blood relative, if that's the right word, from nice, quite a nice phrase uh, relating to Christine Marcy and Michelle Obama, their joint sponsorship of black market organ trade in blood and body parts allegedly taken from assets under management 
by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and SOS Children's Villages in Illinois. Now, Illinois appears to be the first significant state in the United States to host an SOS Children's Villages. And the first SOS Children's Villages in Illinois, there are now two in Chicago, was launched in 1993 at a place called Lockport. Now, in 1991, I think, Field, we're going to find that Barack Obama and Michelle Obama were fired by Sidley Austin. I don't think they left willingly. And I think their law licenses were either revoked or they were told or advised, do not apply for renewal, because at the end of 1991, they were off the books of Sidley Austin, the most power, one of the most powerful law firms in the world, and they were looking for work. And soon afterwards, uh, a directorship was offered to Barack Obama at the Joyce Foundation, and he would go on to provide a million dollars to Kellogg School of Management to develop that carbon dioxide algorithm, which I think is part of the FADEC killing process, where if the carbon dioxide monitored in the emissions of the tailpipe exceeds some arbitrary cap, then they backdoor the flight control computer and adjust the fuel so that you get a pooling of fuel or basically it stops running through to the ignition system and the plane crashes. And that's pretty staggering. But anyway, back to Michelle Obama. Around that time, she and her buddy, who I would think is really a bit of a hybrid, I mean, whether it she's bisexual or lesbian, kind of irrelevant. But this woman took Michelle Obama into the entourage of Richard Daly, the mayor of the city of Chicago. And I get a sense that the mayor, uh, Daly, was truly terrified of these women because he sensed, and this is an allegation, that they were operating a pedophile entrapment service. Uh, now, where would these women, who are not sharpest knives in the drawer, learn that technique? Well, they'd just go around the corner to Hull House, and Hull House was spun off, if you will, from Toynbee Hall in London after a visit by Jane Addams in 1888, actually June 1888, just before the Whitechapel murders. Jane Addams comes back to Chicago and she launches a similar operation. Don't take my words for it, and this is not a value judgment, but Hull House in Chicago in 1888 or 1889 was described as a lesbian-friendly environment. And that's okay, except that these lesbian-friendly environment were host for a lot of very vulnerable young children. Um, dare I say it, borrowed from immigrant families. Now, uh, here's what comes down. And again, this is an unproven allegation. If an immigrant family in Chicago wanting to break free from the ghetto and get out has eight or nine children and they're living in great poverty, it would be perhaps very interesting for the mother or the father of that immigrant family to enter into an agreement or a contract with some of the most powerful and wealthy people in Chicago, the bankers and the industrialists, who might have a certain interest or appetite for young children. So it would be a legitimate hypothesis to suggest that Jane Addams and her friend Ellen Starr raised money for Hull House by buying and selling children. And securing the future of Hull House right up to January the 26th of this year, when they shut down Hull House. Now, who shut down Hull House, and why did they shut it down? They said it was too much debt. But if you look at the board of trustees of Hull House, it includes representatives from a couple of law firms of great interest. I don't remember the names of the individuals, but one is Sidley Austin. The other is DLA Piper, which is now the biggest law firm in the world. So my hypothesis would be that in advance of the NATO summit in Chicago, 
they didn't want our work to expose the pedophile traps and extortion services of Hull House, so they shut it down. But that begs the question of the SOS Children's Villages, because if you look at the structure of the SOS Children's Villages, they are also a lesbian-friendly environment, because this operation, in my opinion, a total scam and a predatory scam, operates in over 130 countries. Do you remember the exact number, Phil? Yeah, 132 countries, and I just want to add one more point that you left hanging. Uh, Michelle Obama was disbarred in 1991. Barry Sotero, uh, who the world thinks is Barack Obama, he uh, could see that his disbarment was eminent, so he just uh, retired his law license. Uh, those documents are available in a chapter of one of, I think, our fourth book. I think John Kuka from CCW, uh, I think he would have his hand on those documents also. Uh, and it's alleged that the reason these two bonehead attorneys were disbarred, I mean, you have to be pretty bad to get disbarred when you're an attorney because the whole justice system is, you know, a disbarable offense. However, these guys probably were shaken down clients of Sidley Austin. That's my guess for money. Well, I think you're right, Field. And this, perhaps the listeners or first-time listeners think we exaggerate that how, how depraved this couple is. But remember that from 1984 to 1988, Sidley Austin took on board to groom and train its female interns the leader of the Weather Underground terrorist organization, the woman who invented the three-finger fork salute to celebrate the, um, the murder of Sharon Tate, which involved stabbing her in the belly. She was pregnant with a fork. So Michel Bernadine Dorn became the mentor of the female interns at Sidley Austin from 1984 to 1988, but she orchestrated the bombing of the Pentagon, the bomb in the women's washroom, in 1972. The French have a, a phrase, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. The more it changes, it's more of the same thing. This woman is a cold-hearted, psychopathic killer. Now, she works, she, she moves from Sidley Austin to Northwestern University and lectures in the School of Law. So what kind of subjects does she lecture on? Well, two of her seminars, one is called the Rwanda Genocide, where about a million Tutsis and their Hutu allies were chopped to bits with machetes imported by Boutros Boutros Ghali from Egypt, and filmed. And essentially, you had first mass genocidal snuff film in operation. And this is celebrated, one assumes, by this disgusting woman, Bernadine Dorn. So apparently she gets her hand... Oh, and the second lecture subject, I think, is very interesting in terms of what might be happening to these children that are assets under management for Christine Marcy and Michelle Obama. She lectures on torture, paradigms, and practice. Now, I don't see how you can lecture on torture, paradigms, and practice unless you've witnessed torture, paradigms, and practice on a scale that I think is almost beyond belief. But let me just conceptualize, and I may be totally off the mark, so Field, you jump in here if I'm wrong, about how Michelle Obama and Bernadine Dorn and your sister can engineer situations where victims are tortured in the most horrific manager, manner, manner available or conceivable. Let's look at the late-term abortion strategy that is sponsored and promoted by Barack and Michelle Obama. Uh, 